Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 tutorial for beginners, the top three mistakes that you new users make. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. So this video here, this is something you want to definitely watch before you dive in and start doing things in QuickBooks. Okay. Now there's a number of mistakes that I see people make, and these are definitely the top three that you want to make sure that you do consistently, uh, and you make sure you do right, uh, all the time. Okay. So the first one is reconciling your bank account. Okay. So just like your personal checkbook, you know, or if you have a personal checking account or a personal savings account, whatever it is, you reconcile that every single month. Well, you want to do the same thing in QuickBooks for your business checking account or your business bank account, whatever uh, the case may be. Okay, so you're gonna be going through, you know, all month, you're gonna be adding certain transactions. And I have other videos on my channel here uh, about entering these transactions and how to record them. So definitely check those out. But once you get to the end of the month and you have all of these bank transactions uh, in your checking account, and I'm gonna go to the check register here and show you. Okay, so you have all these different transactions. You got deposits, you got checks, you got debit card transactions, etc. cetera. Uh, you have to reconcile this, okay? And so basically what that does is it uh, lets you, re you know, see if, okay, maybe you missed something, uh, but you want to make sure that your bank balance in QuickBooks matches up with the actual bank balance. Very, very important. Because if you don't do this, you run the risk of either overstating or understating your cash in your checking account. And I've seen many, many times where people end up bouncing checks in their business because they think they have 120000 in this example in their checking account, and they really have 5000 because they just forgot to record things. And if you are reconciling your bank statement every single month, you will catch these things and make sure that they are recorded. Okay, so quickly how to do this. And again, I've got other videos on how to reconcile your bank account in QuickBooks. So go check those out. But you're gonna go up to banking, you're gonna go down to reconcile, and you're going to choose the account you are reconciling, uh, get your actual bank statement, so if this bank statement ending date is 11-30-2023, make sure the beginning balance matches, put in the ending balance. Let's say that it's $5,000. I'm going to make that up. Uh, no service charge, no interest. We're going to hit continue, and you're simply going to go through, and you're going to check off what cleared. So you're going to look at your bank statement, and you're going to say, okay, this cleared, this cleared, this cleared this cleared, this cleared, et cetera, until you go through everything. And this difference balance is zero. Okay. That's the first mistake new users make is they do not reconcile their bank statement. So you want to make sure you do that. Okay. Now let me go back to the home screen over here. Now the second big thing that new users, the biggest mistake they make is not entering bills and paying bills through QuickBooks. Okay. Again, this is very important because it allows you to track what bills you have coming up and when you have to pay them. And it also records the expense in the right time period. Okay. So for example, if you get a power bill on November 28th and you enter it December 1st, or you, let's say you pay it December 1st, you enter it in QuickBooks as a payment December 1st. Now you've put that expense in December when it should really be in November. Okay, so here's how you're going to go and enter bills. You can see here on the flow chart, you can click this. You can also go up to vendors, enter bills, take you to the same spot. Okay, so you're going to put in your vendor, and this will be a bill you get electronically in the mail, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's say that we have City of Bayshore, and you're going to put in the bill number. Okay, that way you make sure you don't duplicate bills. And again, check out my other videos on how to properly enter bills. Uh, it's got a lot more information in there. We're going to say this bill is $150. Okay, and the due date is, we'll say January 17th, 2024. Put it to the right account, save and close. All right, so once you do that, you can go and you can go to vendors, pay bills, Okay, and you're going to see all the bills that you have to pay and you can sort them by due date. You can filter them. You can do all sorts of things. But if we want to pay this bill, the one we just entered, we check it off. 
uh, we're going to say either to be printed, so you can print the check from QuickBooks, or you can assign a check number if you're paying this uh, through your online banking or electronically. We're going to say to be printed, City of Bayshore, 150 bucks, pay selected bills, and now we can go to print and send that check or we can pay more bills, okay? So that's mistake number two. You definitely want to make sure that you use this enter and pay bills function within QuickBooks. Very, very important. And I see people screw up their, their books, their financial statements all the time uh, by not using this. All right, the third and final mistake that I see new users make is entering credit card charges in QuickBooks and reconciling your credit card statement, just like reconciling your bank statement. Okay, so you have a credit card in your business, and if you carry a balance, and, and what I mean by that is if, let's say in one month, you charge a thousand bucks and you only make a minimum payment, you wanna make sure that you enter all $1,000 of the charges. Now, the reason for that is that that is an expense when you make the charge and all too often i see where people will just put in a bill like i just showed you they'll say vendor enter bills and put in a bill to the credit card for the minimum payment that is not correct okay so here's the proper way to do this okay you're going to go to banking enter credit card charges you're going to get your statement for your credit card and you're going to enter every single charge you can also use bank feeds for this okay so you're going to put in the purchased from so we'll say this is Costco, it's going to be office supplies, and on 12-15-2023, we charged $99.63, okay? So we're going to hit save and close. Now, you're going to go through and you're going to enter every single one of those charges, and then at the end of the month, when you have that statement, you're going to go again to reconcile, and you're going to choose the credit card. Okay, QuickBooks credit card, you're going to look at the statement date, you're going to put in the ending balance, and just like a bank reconciliation, you're going to check off everything that cleared on that statement. And by cleared, what I mean is every charge and every payment that you had. Okay, now, once you do this, okay, so we'll say the ending balance is $150. All right, this will not balance because... I have not uh, worked this out for what it should be, but let's say it's 99, okay? Uh, when it reconciles, you're gonna have a zero difference here. We're gonna say reconcile now. Um, we're going to say enter adjustment. Uh, and then this option comes up. Write a check for payment now or enter a bill for payment later. So this is how you enter a credit card bill in QuickBooks. You have to go through this reconciliation process. All right, so we're going to close that, and you're going to put in the vendor for the credit card company, and you're going to change this amount due. If you're only paying a minimum payment, put in 25 bucks. That way, it will record the balance on your balance sheet showing how much you still owe the credit card company. Okay. So this is a big one. I see this all the time. So you want to make sure you enter those credit card charges, reconcile the credit card, and then enter the bill for the amount you're going to pay. Okay? So those are the top three mistakes that I see new users make in QuickBooks, and you want to make sure you avoid these at all costs because it definitely is time-consuming and very difficult to go back and fix everything after you've been doing it incorrectly for a while. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Uh, also head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org.